Relentlessly attacking the power structure. You're listening to Alex Jones. By the way, Roger Stone, you heard it here first three days ago, was considering suing Twitter. He's talked to top lawyers. He has a cut and dry case of discrimination. They've operated like a utility. They told Congress they're a utility, so is Google, so is Facebook. But now we have Veritas video and internal documents across the board. Where if, if, if their employees say men exist, they're fired. Uh, and I know that sounds crazy, but, but that's how cultic it is now. Like robots, we are the Borg. There are no men. There are no women. Uh, and so he's getting ready to file a big suit. Milo, others are probably going to join. I've been looking at it, but they always ban us and bring us back. I've talked to lawyers. We've got good cases, but not as good as yours. And this brings light right as they bring in this new guy to head up the Federal uh, Trade Commission, who's an antitrust Google buster. And then we had the big uh, executives and people that I'm going to play later after you leave testifying uh, that there really was no Russia collusion. In fact, the Russia stuff was anti-Trump. Yeah, no, it, it's extraordinary. The, the double standard that we're experiencing on Twitter, look, every single day on Twitter, people threaten to kill me, kill my wife, kill my children, kill my dogs. Nothing happens to them. They're still there. Keith Olbermann threatens to burn people's houses down with them in them. He drops the F-bomb constantly and attacks on the president. The man is not there. But still, he is verified and on Twitter. Uh, today, uh, an Antifa spokesman announces the future beheading of a number of Americans. Still, their Twitter feed remains intact. So um, it's about time. Uh, and I have met with a number of lawyers. This is very simple. Twitter needs to be regulated like a utility. The phone company's a private company, but they can't deny you a telephone. This is a First Amendment issue. And to say, oh, you used obscenity. Really? Well, you better look at Keith Olbermann's feed if that's the measure. Um, I didn't say anything on Twitter that hasn't been said. Now, I'm You sorry. said Don Lemon is a complete idiot. Well, I said he's a snowflake. He's an imbecile. He, and his view, again... The and they proved he's a snowflake. You got banned. The, 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 the claim by Don Lemon is that the Clintons have been completely exonerated on Uranium One. No, Don, they haven't. Stop saying that. It's a lie. And when you repeat a lie, it makes you a liar. Go to your next party and knock it off, will you? And then a separate issue, then you're going to go take a break and get ready to uh, host the war room coming up and the fourth hour here today that I'll join you in with... What do you make of Podesta? He hardly ever tweets when he does. Foaming at the mouth at you, foaming at the mouth at me, making threats, uh, saying I'm going to eat, you know, eat crap. I mean, what is going on with him? Uh, I think he's, he's becoming unhinged. You notice his brother was forced to step down from their extremely lucrative influence peddling operation in Washington, D.C. Uh, they try to divert attention to Pizzagate, but Pizzagate's not the issue. It's the art on the walls. It's the weird stuff written on your knuckles, John. We're on to you. We know what you are and what you do. Exactly, and I'm, I'm saying Podesta should be investigated from what's in the WikiLeaks. The New York Times, everybody, diverted it to a pizza place. We covered it. We took the bait, but we got the documents, and we got the PIs on the ground for six months. We're not stupid. No. Uh, so, uh, look, I think he's becoming unhinged because they are getting exposed. Their whole carefully constructed Russian narrative is falling apart before their very eyes. The exact thing that they were seeking to divert from, the fact that they are the ones in bed with You know the, Podesta's watching right now. I hope so. I Listen, hope so. He, he only talks about us. Yeah, well, I, I don't try to get your feed followers up just by saying my name. It's ironic. Twitter killed me just when I hit 300,000 followers. And again, they do that to suppress. It turned out like 80 some percent of Obama's, Hillary's, it's all fake. We don't go buy followers. I could go buy 10 million tomorrow for like $50,000. Yeah, I, all it's of mine fake. Are real. It's fake. No, Drudges is all, Drudges is the number one site in the world, and he only has like a million followers on Twitter. Be you know, because he doesn't have fake followers. Roger Stone, great job, my friend. We got Matt Bracken, Mike Cernovich, and more coming up on the Islamic terror attack. Mike Cernovich is coming up in just four or five minutes. Matt Bracken is only popping in briefly, but I want to get him back on the war room and back on our show tomorrow. He's having some Skype trouble. In the last 30 minutes, we're just getting a pop in from Matt Bracken, uh, counterterrorism expert, best selling author, former Navy SEAL, really smart guy, predicting. 
six months ago that there'd be a big Antifa uprising uh, trying to overthrow Trump, that they would be, uh, get very, very violent. They're simultaneously saying none of this exists while they're calling for it. But here is the full page New York Times ad calling for the total launch of a revolution on November 4th, this Saturday, and that they're going to, quote, drive the president from power. We just had Roger Stone on who met with one of the chief advisors uh, to the Bush family and others saying Trump's gone by December. Ladies and gentlemen, they're making their move. It's a confidence game, though, because they said two months ago he'd be gone in two months. So their plans behind schedule. His ratings are going up. He's delivering on the economy. But just a brief snapshot, Matt Bracken, uh, we've seen the situation while they had the uh, Saudi Arabian military doing a conference and other things in Vegas, uh, and more and more that's emerging as a deep state operation, very sophisticated, uh, connecting to different groups. And then we also at the same time have this latest Islamic attack yesterday, uh, killing eight people that the New York Times calls a truck attack. In five minutes, what's on your radar? What do you see happening? Um, just for a short thing, something that I haven't really heard a lot about in terms of the, uh, the, the attack yesterday they are, they never mentioned Islam, Jihad, or Allah, Allah Akbar at the conference this morning or yesterday. It's the them. It's like Martians. We're not going to surrender to the them or the they. But they're so to say it. Imagine trying to fight World War II where you can't say German or Nazi. You can only say uh, belligerent Europeans. You know, it, it's crazy. But the the actual translation of Allah Akbar is not God is great. That's a big mistake. It's when they say Allah who and they put the ooh on the end of Allah, that means greater. So it means Allah is greater than your God. Allahu Akbar is our God. That's right. They're saying our God, God, our God dominates you. We are defeating you. We are greater than you. We have conquered you. That's right. And and watching Geraldo and these other apologists, they seem to be saying that the solution is uh, putting up bollards all over the place. Anywhere a truck can go, we're going to put up bollards. But I think we should call those things Allahu Akbalards or Allahu Akbariers, because that's what they are. In, in Europe, they call them Koran blocks. You know, they put up Jersey barricades and uh, they put up uh, these uh, cement bollards. They never had to do that in any other war. It's because today the war is among us. And, you know, as mad as I, as I am at this terrorist, his name is literally a uh, sword of Allah. You know, that nobody of our extreme vetting picked up on the fact that his parents named this boy Sword of Allah, and he won the, is the, he won the ISIS lottery to come to America and bring 28 more, I just heard today, bring 28 of his closest inbred family here, which I'm sure they're all on welfare, you know, plotting more jihad attacks. We pay for them everything, and then they hate us because we're creative and we're not inbred. Yeah, and as, and as angry as I am at these at these uh, crazy jihadists, you know, if a if a crazy farmer puts a fox in his chicken house, and the next morning all the chickens are dead, you know, the fox is just acting according according to his nature. You know, the farmer is the one that's responsible. So it's Chuck Schumer and these people that thought it's a great idea to flood the country with you know tomorrow's jihadists. They're like the crazy farmer that put the fox in the chicken house. The fox and the sword of Islam, the sword of Allah. He's just going by his his own nature, his true nature. It's, 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 the liberals believe that there's the, in the what they call the magic dirt theory. You take a guy who's raised for 22 years to be a devout, you know, Islamic jihadist, hate women, hate gays, uh, hate hate freedom. Bring him to America, and he's going to turn into a Jeffersonian, uh, you know, constitutional Republican. It's insanity. And the main people that we need to point the finger at. And I'm very glad that our president is doing it. Are these creeps like Chuck Schumer? They're the fox that is putting the chicken in the hen house. That's right. He headed Blame up the program, and we've shown the video of this guy after he's run over a bunch of people and jumped out of the car with his fake gun before the cops get him. Uh, he just he just literally looks like a rabid dog. Like you can tell when a dog's got rabies or is mentally ill, kind of stumbles around and acts weird. I mean, he just looks like an inbred mental patient. And why would they bring all these inbred mental patients in with to run around and kill us? I mean, I'm so sick of it. And then to watch CNN and the New York Times try to cover it up. I mean, did you see Jake Tapper call Allah Akbar say, oh, it's so beautiful? Yeah, that's and, and unfortunately, that's you know, woven right through their religion. 
it's it's impossible to um to take out of it and you know there's there's just no expunging it tommy robinson the brit has a great book you know uh on the on the Quran, why uh, Muslims kill for for uh, the Quran? You can't reform Islam. You you know it, it is the Ten Commandments are all kill kill kill. You know you, there's no way to take it out. And so he thinks it's, he's it's, doing something good, and then Jake Tapper goes, "It is so beautiful." That's all a direct code to them saying, just like we supported the Arab Spring at CNN, we support you, brother. Good job. Just make sure it's a church next time. Yeah, the, the, the moderate, the so-called moderate Muslims actually think that this guy is an idiot for blowing their cover. Because the smart ones think, look, we're, we're going we're gonna to win demographically. We're going to win just in the war of the womb, outbreeding you five to one. So, d brother, you're blowing our cover. You know, I, we, we know you're eager to get your 72 virgins, but you're making us look bad and exposing uh, the, the true aim. And the way he so, runs yeah, around in circles, he looks like a cockroach. Yeah, he, he, he didn't have the guts to actually pull a knife out and charge anybody, though. He just ran around with his toy guns, trying for a suicide by cop. I'm very glad he got shot in the gluteus maximus, so he's available to uh, to interview, because he's going to be the poster boy for, for Islamism. I hope that they give him a microphone and a show, because he is the rabid dog of Islam. Well, Matthew, Matt, I want to get you back up on the war room today if you can, because I want to get your predictions for November 4th, what's coming, if not tomorrow. Thank you so much, my friend. Thanks. All right. Everything got backed up today because his Skype had problems for 30 minutes. I apologize to Mike Cerner for getting him on late, but we'll hold him a little bit in the next uh, uh, segment at the bottom of the hour. Then we have uh, Stephen Gurn, a uh, highly decorated uh, Marine and then contractor for the company, as it's known. Uh, who's been speaking about the whole Islamic invasion that's coming. I, I want to get into that briefly with Mike Cernovich and then into November 4th, because they say, again, we're going to kill you and attack and overthrow November 4th. But then they say, oh, it's insane when Mike Cernovich and Alex Jones and others report on it. Nothing's coming November 4th. Mike Cernovich, what is the point of them saying nothing's coming November 4th, but then full page ads saying we're going to overthrow Trump on November 4th? What is going on here? I mean, they're so weird and unhinged. And as we learned from when Antifa was carrying a pedophile sign and then they go, oh, well, we didn't even mean to carry it. Someone just handed it to us like, wait, so if somebody hands you a pedophile sign, you're just going to carry around whatever, whatever anybody hands you. They're, they're not thinking. Alex, that's the whole point. And they're they, now they, trying they, to say that no you planted it with no proof. Do we know who do we know where the sign came from? Yeah, there's zero proof of any of this. The media is saying it's a false flag, and I go, okay, where's your proof? And they go, well, Antifa wouldn't carry it. And I go, well, they did carry it. And then they go, well, somebody gave it to them. Well, okay, who? Who? No proof at all. But like you the said yesterday, now they're having to admit false flags could exist. <laughs> right, which is a fantastic narrative win. So from my perspective, I don't care if it was some people, maybe from 4chan or something, who pranked them. I don't care because we win either way. Yeah, because no one ever stages anything, even though the new CIA documents came out and admitted they were staging terror then. Mike Cernovich is our guest. We're going to come back, get his take on November 4th, what Antifa is planning to launch. You can see the whole coordination with the Republicans as well. The Republican leadership is saying Trump is gone in December. Now, I think that's wishful thinking, but they're going to do their darndest. We'll be right back. He's at Cernovich. I'm at Real Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, during the break, I walked back into the break room to get a cup of coffee. And Chucky Schumer was on Fox News live in the Senate blaming Trump for New York. <laughs> this is the guy. This is the guy that got the bill passed with Obama. He sponsored it. He rewrote it. He's the chief sponsor of the diversity lottery, the cultural enrichment, as the EU calls it. We didn't make up these sick jokes. We call it cultural enrichment when they kill, you know, 89 people in Nice and injured 280 or whatever. Or all the other stuff and scream out of Akbar, you know, run your toddler over as they run. Uh, a Chuck Schumer beauty, Trump calls for the end of diversity visa program. And then this is Schumer's response. We're going back to Mike Cernovich. Here it is. President Bush, in a moment of national tragedy, understood the meaning of his high office and sought to bring our country together. President Trump, where is your leadership? I'm calling on the president 
to rescind his proposed cuts to this vital anti-terrorism funding immediately. So just last week, the uh, and then and then there was more I saw where he's blaming Trump when they're trying to hold up budgets. I mean, this is just total deception. What do you make of this, Mike Cernovich? Yeah, Trump though is doing deals with Schumer. Um, right. That, that's what cracks me up is the people who are meanest to Trump are the people who seem to get his attention. But then when you and I ever criticize Trump, they go, oh, you know, Jones and Cernovich are betraying us. Like, no, that's how Schumer you have to to get anything with Trump. You have to negotiate. And that's what Schumer is doing. And that's who Trump actually listens to and does deals to. So that that's interesting. Schumer is doing I that. I found out Schumer from someone directly that that one video the night before the debate or two nights before I said, you attack or it's over and you're a joke and he was on the fence whether he was going to attack or not and i'm told that video pushed him over the edge of me screaming at him so is that the answer here cernovich yeah you have to push back i i did a video where i said there's all this violence against trump supporters he won't call it out therefore trump is okay with antifa violence against trump supporters a day or two later at that rally in arizona trump finally for the first time called out antifa so people go, oh, you know, Cernovich Jones, you guys are on and off the Trump train. No, j let the professionals do our jobs. We know what we're doing. We're reminding Trump that, hey, this is an ongoing negotiation. You're just not going to steamroll us. And we see, again, Chuck Schumer gets great deals out of Trump because Trump does not respond well to weak people and to weakness. He only responds well to people who negotiate back very aggressively. Exactly. And instead of me just directing the conversation, you've always got big stuff in the in the frying pan and also stuff on the back burner. What's other big news in Planet Cernovich? Well, um, Vanity Fair has come out with stories that Roger Stone, of course, is broken, you have broken, I have broken, where Trump realizes what a disaster Jared Kushner is. Big, big write-up in Vanity Fair about the bad advice from uh, Kushner to fire General Flynn. That was the biggest mistake of Trump's presidency. Firing James Comey, that was a Kushner idea, too. So the, the White House coup is at a, how do you want to, it's been paused because General Kelly is now tagged into the culture war. So General Kelly has said privately to Trump, I know people who are familiar with the conversation, that now I understand why you're always hitting back because once they went after General Kelly when he was very, very classy, very distinguished gold star father, he said, oh wait, so this is what it's like to be attacked over nothing. They're fabricating things, they're lying about me. So Kelly said, I understand, Trump, your tweets, and I, you know. I was, I know that was my next talking. question, man. You're always on target. Kelly really has gotten better now after they attacked him and his family, and is now the, and now the left totally turned on him. Uh, so, so that's good to know. Now Kelly understands. Exactly. So that is, again, Trump's Twitter has been much more effective now. The rhetoric isn't quite as fiery or hot, but he's tweeting more often now. This comms team is doing actually a better job of Twitter. So, so what got Kelly I, to finally wake up? I mean, just the attacks uh, on Trump lying about him and, and how he handled the phone calls or what? Yeah, the way they politicized the death of his son. For Kelly, that was the red line. Kelly was devastated by the death of it. I mean, anybody would be devastated by the death of a child. And the way the media politicized the death. And of he General took it Kelly's personal because Trump was saying exactly what Kelly wrote for him to say. Kelly took that really personal. Yeah. And then the media go is going after him now and attacking him. And Kelly realizes, oh, wait, these people fabricate information. They they, they are liars, right? They They are liars. They are fabricators. And Kelly now understands that you have to be aggressive. You have to go on the attack all Just of the like time. Just like Trump said in the press conference last week, he goes, people are finally getting, I have to punch back. Yeah. So Kelly's great now. Kelly goes on TV. He's talking about the Civil War. And now they're trying to say, oh, you support slavery. And so General Kelly, remember, this is an honorable man. I, I don't claim to be the, the most, you know, I'm a very flawed human being. I'm not a man like General Kelly. General Kelly is the kind of person who would have been a Roman senator, the kind of person who would have been beloved by historians for throughout his life. He's what you would consider the best of America and the best of American values. And now he realizes, well, wait a minute. They're fabricating things about me. Now they're saying General Kelly likes slavery. They're, they're making fun of his son's death. They're, they're denigrating him, denigrating a service. And he's he realizing, realizes, well, he's been compartmentalized inside the military, honorable people. He doesn't understand the scum we're dealing with. And now he's having to w wake up to the, the literal zombie scum attack. And now he realizes why we all go so hard. 
that was why he kept our articles kind of away from the president because he didn't understand. They're like, well, you, you know, he, he had said we're all too aggressive and we shouldn't be so divisive. You and I, we're, we're under not total divisive. attack. We want to unite America. We want to bring Americans together. The media won't let us. The media divides. They're using divide and conquer tactics, hate rhetoric, terrorist rhetoric, apologizing for terrorism, telling people we need to have more terrorism. Look the other way about terrorism. Look the other way as they did for three decades about the rape and pedophilia in Hollywood. They're attacking Corey Feldman. Barbara Walters attacked Corey Feldman. Well, that was my next question. Mainstream headlines, Hollywood accusers, harassers, molesters, rapists. The counts at 56 now confirmed racist, uh, rapist and molesters. I mean, this whole thing's coming down quicker than I thought. But what are the unforeseen blowback from this? Well, you and I, and we can pull that footage up. You and I said that Harvey Weinstein was given to the media as a sacrificial lamb, as a distraction from the pedophilia stuff. And, and then that, that was their ruse. That's why they gave the media Harvey Weinstein, because the media didn't want to cover the pedophilia. But the pedophilia stuff is coming out now. That was a um, it was going to come out one way or another. So I predicted that there was going to be a major pedophile uh, pedophile scandal. Then you have Kevin Ke um, Kevin Spacey. And yeah, who, I by have, the way, everybody I, always told me was a you know, boy raper, basically. I mean, I mean, I had the makers of a major film here. We were like, well, let's not get into it because he's not in the film. But yeah, the word is Kevin Spacey's kind of a kingpin. Yeah, exactly. And now what I find interesting is that the fake news media will not interview the filmmaker about Hollywood pedophilia. So the filmmaker is going on RT to talk about it. And then people go, why do people go on RT? Well, because why won't the media tell the truth about Hollywood pedophilia? Unbelievable. Let me ask you about November 4th when they kicked this thing off. I actually, my lawyers don't want me to get into it, but I mean, literally, Al Gore, uh, his whole deal, like telling me I better roll over by November 4th and all this other stuff. I mean, we are <laughs> on the march. Two weeks ago, he was on the Jesse Waters show and predicted there'd be big truck attack killings in places like New York. Two weeks later, it happened. Stephen Gurn, highly decorated Marine, and of course, contractor with the company, um, who last year went public about when he's in these Islamic countries, almost all of them admit to his face while he's training them to fight that they would love to kill him. Uh, so he's here with us uh, coming up in about five minutes to break down the latest with the eight dead, 11 wounded, and this rat-like creature running around with his little toy gun after he's done it. Uh, I, I guess it's kind of bittersweet. He's alive. Wish he was dead, but I'm glad he's alive on the other side to get information. But the, the Islam is definitely dovetailed with Antifa, George Soros, and Refuse Fascism, same group that uh, set up the uh, Occupy Wall Street, as my producers are pointing out, says the nightmare must end, the Trump-Pence regime must go. The November 4th, it begins. Be there. Join with thousands who will gather in cities and towns across the country, a movement of protest that continue every day and night. Growing until we become millions determined not to stop until the regime is driven from power. This is the Soros astroturf to line up with the neocons and the rhinos and the Democrats saying by December he will be gone. And Roger Stone was in D.C. yesterday. I've got all the names, the info. The Republicans are saying, yeah, the, the, Trump's gone in December. Yeah, and he wasn't going to get the nomination either. And then he wasn't going to get seated either. Mike Cernovich, what is your intel on this? Is this just them with all their threats and all their November 4th threats? You told me you've gotten some of the same legal threats now. I guess everybody's getting them. Are they just seeing who they can intimidate or what is the point of this? Because all it's done has gotten me in pure fighting mode. I mean, they're walking on the fight inside of me. Yeah, they, they banned Roger Stone maliciously and without permanently, good cause. Permanently. Right. And they can only push it so far. They've lost every time. They use their little alt-right sab saboteurs people to end our march on Google. But now that that's over, we'll just have a big march. We can have big marches. We can bring a lot of people And it out. shows how weak they are. They, they were so afraid of your Google march. Yeah, exactly. We were going to do a march on Google. And then they used Fed, Fed embeds with these alt-right morons in Charlottesville. And the next thing you Who, know— by the way, are, are admitted Obama— uh, Occupy Wall Street, they, three of them were formerly funded uh, by the Occupy Wall Street that's now refused fascism. I mean, it's totally obvious. They're all little pretty boy, strumpet leftists who think they're smart enough to false flag us.
Exactly. And then the, the next week we were supposed to have a march on Google. The fake news media, uh, they lied about it and claimed as a white nationalist rally. It was nothing of the sort. So the media was able to kill that with their false flag terrorist attack. But the, the, the demand is there. The people are there. The people want to do it. They can only push us so far. And these frivolous lawsuit threats, these attacks on the integrity of the people, the violence, the pedophilia, the, the rape coming out of Hollywood, people are done with it. And they need to be very, very careful who they're pushing around. Exactly. And everybody knows this. But we got to be strategic about it. But they're going to counter strike. But historically, gut level, everything, humanity wants to be free. And authoritarianism is coming crashing down. They had America and the rest of the world kind of mesmerized by television and mainstream media for a while. But now people are coming out of the trance. Doesn't mean they're left wing, right wing, Christian, not Christian, any of that. It just means common sense. They recognize lies. They see a fraud. They see globalism for what it is. And I, I just can't believe how the arrogance of Hillary, are they actually that arrogant, Podesta, and the rest? or is that their con man game where they act so confident? Because, man, I mean, we've gone from turning the tide to ripping their arms out of their sockets politically now. I mean, now this is like a stampede over them. I mean, this is epic. Yeah, they're drunk with power. Tony Podesta, of all people, threatening to sue Tucker Carlson. My God, I wish Tony Podesta would threaten to sue me. I want to talk about that subterranean basement where he watches dangerous works of art and other things that have been reported by The Guardian, The Washington Post. I want to and he published Tony photos Podesta. of little toddlers with their butts beat red. So I, w I want to know, again, the Washington Post reported because they did a puff piece on Tony Podesta. That's how gross these people were. They, they got away with it for years. And see, I'm not Machiavelli, but once they do it, I am. When, when the media made up Pizzagate off of the emails uh, that were there with WikiLeaks that need to be investigated, diverted to the pizza place, we covered what the media was covering. We said, hey, this is bull. They took us being moral as that we were weak and then tried to frame us for the whole story. But I actually, seriously now, it's almost like, I didn't do it on purpose, but like a setup, because now I realize at a Machiavellian level, I get Podesta, his brother. His brother is saying, I like dangerous art. I watch it in a dungeon. It's it's naked little kids. Here's my neighbor kids with their butts paddled red. And I mean, I'm like, how does the Washington Post publish images of little kids' butts? And, but and that was 2007, though, when they just thought they'd throw it in our face, Cernovich. And then I'm thinking, why am I scared of these people? Bring it on. Let's go. You know what? Well, well yeah, that, that's the whole issue. That's why I, I've never apologized. I always double down because they do view – because you got to remember they're satanic people. They're demonic people. They're used to abusing and exploiting the vulnerable. You cannot show them any weakness because you and I are good. If, if I do something wrong to you, I'll say, hey, Alex, you know, I didn't realize that. My apologies. And you'll say, yeah, apology accepted. This isn't how they live. They go, oh, wait, you apologized. You must be a moral person. Maybe you're a Christian. Now I'm really going to go in on you. Now I'm really going to try to destroy you. They because take they your humanity as weakness. Like one time I accidentally gave up one of your sources. You didn't get really mad at me. And I said I had a brain fart. I apologize. He said, hey, that's okay. But it was you didn't take it. It was like a power over me. But exactly, that's how they are. Yeah, I, for, I even forgot that even happened. But Again, yeah, I never even brought it up ever again. You just realize that's life. But that's because I have more of a higher set of values where I'll accept an apology. But these demonic, satanic people in D.C., the people like the Podestas who have no integrity spirit cooking. Let's talk about the spirit cooking, John Podesta. Oh, yeah. Let's Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, here they are at an Aleister Crowley event where he's being promised blood and semen to drink. And so we investigated it. Yeah, there's a lot I would love to talk to them about. I would love to, to sit down with John Podesta for hours and say, so have you ever drank, have you ever drank soup that contained blood and semen? Because that's what the recipe book calls for. By the way, did you and see where Obama... The books and I can show you the dinner that you were invited to by Tony Podesta. So go ahead, bro. Let, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what you're into. Let's talk about the art. Let's talk about... By the way, the did you hear Obama Podesta's office. is getting a painting of him by an artist that paints it in semen. The, the Obama... Official portrait is by a guy that paints in semen. Again, I, I would love to ask all these people these questions. They get really triggered when you talk about it, but maybe they need to learn what discovery looks like. Maybe maybe they need to realize that, okay, once you sue somebody, 
And if you're suing them for de uh, defaming your so-called character, everything is an open book now. D remember that email they sent about Dennis Hastert? Oh, it's sad what happened to Dennis Hastert. I remember that email, the, the Podesta emails. That's right. Dennis Even Hastert. mainstream media had Hastert in the news recently criticizing Trump. And they didn't even put in the article. He's a convicted boy raper. Mike Cernovich, powerful info. Please join us as much as you can uh, at Cernovich on Twitter while you're still there and so much more. Thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure, Ops. Wow. Okay. Uh, everything's backed up about 15 minutes late today because we had some technical problems earlier uh, getting bracket on. Nobody's fault. Just the way Skype is. We're going to go to break and come back with the gentleman I was just talking about, Stephen Gern, uh, who, again, has videos with 50 million, 45 million, 48 million, you name it. Uh, just talking about, hey, I've been in the Marines, I've been a contractor, I work for the company, and I'm overseas, and I mean, the Muslims I'm training to defend their country admit they want to kill me, basically. Um, and, you know, one of the security guys I got uh, working here was one of the, remember we heard eight guys trained 14,000 Iraqis or whatever? He's one of the guys, and they would just most admit, well, I will kill you when I'm told to, and, and you're like training them how to use a weapon, and they're telling you, I'm going to kill you, and it's just like, this is insane. This is what's going on. And then the cultural enrichment of Chucky e. Schumer bringing these guys into the country. And then he was on the news earlier blaming Trump. <laughs> I mean, they got a lot of nerve. So we're going to find out what next shoot and drop is straight ahead with our guest. I'm Alex Jones. Newswars.com. Newswars. Spread the link. I'm Alex Jones, your host. This is the Info War. And I, this is... I'm not a hero. I'm nobody special. I'm just a common sense guy that isn't going to take it lying down. I know you're not taking it lying down either. But all these Islamists are running around shooting, killing, stabbing, and running people over every couple days in the Western world is just a symptom, the cold sore rising to the top of the underlying illness of the leftists and the globalists and what they're doing. Why would Europe bring in 10 million Islamicist unvetted 80% of military age men because they say at the UN they want to break up the Christian society. The Pope says it. I mean, this is a globalist takeover of every institution. That Pope's not a Catholic. And most Catholics know that. So this is an incredible time to be alive. And the left and Antifa and George Soros with full page ads in the New York Times say they're launching it November 4th all over the country. We're, I should plug, we're going to be live. Uh, from 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. Saturday, Infowars.com forward slash show on our own feeds. We're getting censored on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. And if stations want to pick it up, they're welcome to, but it's going to be basically commercial free. We'll air some breaks, but they won't be set breaks. And we're going to have reporters out in the field in, in, in different parts of the country. But this is a full launch, and they're calling for cop killing. I mean, it says right here, overthrow the government and drive Trump from power. And they have threatened us. I mean, I'm not at liberty to get into it right now because obviously there's, there's a lot of reasons not to. But I've been given ultimatums like, to surrender by Saturday. <laughs> you know, when I'm tired, I get these threats, I suddenly have energy. And I mean, I don't get why they think these threats are going to work. But I guess they work on some people. Uh, they didn't work on Stephen Gern, who was reaching... 40-something million people in his first video just saying, hey, I've been training over here, been training the Muslims to defend their own countries. Almost all of them want to kill us. We shouldn't be here. This is insane. And there is no such thing as, you know, a moderate. Uh, this is a joke. And then they basically kicked him out of his uh, contracting work, leading large teams. But he's here now doing great with his own entrepreneurial operations and speaking out and not being censored. And that's what it's all about. But understand, the fight is now, folks. This is the second American Revolution. They want it to be a civil war. Uh, but uh, thank you, uh, Stephen uh, Gurn. You were here just a few days ago. And now another jihadi Allah Akbar or, or our God is greater than yours attack. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, obviously, I was on my way to Florida yesterday and got into Florida, was on my way to the uh, hotel, and as soon as I get to the hotel, I see what's happened. Uh, the funny thing about it is, uh, about a month and a half ago, I was on the uh, Jesse Waters show, and it's exactly what I said. It's exact what they were doing in Spain, what they were doing in the EU, what they were doing in France. This was all how they were perfecting their tactics so they could come here to the United States and do it. Now, obviously, we want to talk about gun control. We want to talk about all this craziness. Well, let me tell you something. They didn't use a gun this time. What, he had a paint, butt, a paint gun and a pellet gun. 
And I don't understand why that uh, officer didn't, you know, shoot to kill. But obviously, that, that, that that's not my gig. I'm glad that he actually didn't. So now we can interrogate this individual if we're going to even be able to interrogate him. I doubt we will because there's so many bleeding hearts out there that we're not even going to be able to properly interrogate this individual. But, you know, th this seems to be something that it's happened here in the United States before. It's happened all over the EU and it's going to continue to happen. And unless we don't start doing what we need to do with proper vetting, just like President Donald Trump said in the very beginning, we are going to see a lot more of this because they are paving the road to allow this to happen in the United States. And the left not accepting what's actually happening here and the people who just don't want to accept that uh, th this is this is not the norm. I heard yesterday on uh, Fox News an individual say we need to accept this as the norm. No, we don't need to accept this as the norm. They accepted it as the norm in the UK and you see what's happened to their country. It cannot happen here in the United States and it will not happen in the United States. The only people who can stop that are people like you and me who want to put a stand. We want to stand and put a stop to what's happening here. If our if our officials, if our elected officials aren't going to do it, we need to do it here, right here on our level, on the local and the state levels. Absolutely. Uh, and almost all these guys are inbred. They wear these, these women's nightgowns. Uh, they just wander around on welfare all day. And then they just tell us how they're elite and we're scum and then kill us. And we're supposed to bow down to this guy who brought in 28 of his rat-like family. It's unbelievable. And what's happening, they're being attached to a visa program. This is this is what it all comes down to. Again, here we are with the vetting. They're, they're, they're coming in on a visa, a, a program, which is like um, a lottery is what they call it, the lottery. And it's and it's and it's BS. It's complete. BS. And you know what it is? It's like Logan's run. It's a death lottery for us. And like you said, Khan, the Islamist mayor of London, keeps saying, get used to it, get used to it, accept it. Don't even put it in the news. They want us just to accept them coming in and us bowing to them and then murdering us. Exactly. There is no acceptance of this. It's just like, you know, in, in Islam and Sharia law, there is no acceptance. There is no tolerance there. You're either Sharia compliant or you're not Sharia compliant. And I want to You're either in one. submission to their God, because as they point out, you know, Arabic better than I, he didn't say Allah Akbar. He said our God is greater. What's the difference? Well, Allah Akbar, it means, you know, God is great, but but usually what you'll see is they'll see you'll see people coming up and they're doing the whole number one sign. It's not number one sign. What he's doing is pointing up to Allah, that Allah is the greatest. And, that, and that's exactly what it is. And that's their thought process. He was what we would call Sharia compliant. And, and we were talking about this. As a matter of fact, on Jesse Waters show, he had said something to me. And I wanted to go ahead and clarify it. If you are Sharia compliant, OK, if you are a Sharia compliant Muslim, this is what you want to do. This is jihad. What he did is he committed jihad, and that is how they win. That is that is like the, the lottery for them to commit jihad. That is the ultimate. So that's what he has done. He committed jihad, and that's where we are right now. This this is what's happening. And we sure. We what do you make from your sources? And, and uh, we've got our sources, but it, it's them. They say they're going to launch all sorts of hell come this Saturday, and we're already seeing. I think this is a tremor. For more of this going to come as we see Islamists and ISIS coordinating with the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, and, and with the Antifa. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about, you know, earlier about the Marxist movement. This is this is two groups or three groups of people, one on one side, one on the other side, moving parallel against what we believe in, against our Constitution, trying to destroy our Constitution. Our Constitution is the, the longest lasting Constitution in the world. And we must maintain that and we must continue to fight for it. And the people who don't want to do it, like like Antifa, you know, I don't think the Islamic State has anything to do with what Antifa in, in, in Black Lives Matter is. But they are able to piggyback off of what is happening. And you got your George. That's right, because all the groups all think they're going to end up in charge. So the, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, another Islamic staying. You're exactly right. And that's all they're doing. They're piggybacking off it. They're seeing that what they're doing is actually creating these, you know, ripples in the water, as you can see, and they're piggybacking off it. And this is a huge problem. So it isn't just about stopping the Muslim Brotherhood, Antifa, Black Lives Matter, and, you know, Islamic State. We need to stop them all. We need to stop them all. And we need to have solid policies to do it. And, you know, I'm not even worried about policies at this point. You know, I said something about you know the uh, this the the suit wearing jihadists versus the pajama wearing jihadists. G jihadists. We got to worry about them all. But and that's the know, thing. They know they have missions. They know they're committed. They admit it. 
And, and, and so we have to be just as committed to stop playing games. People think, oh, that's a bunch of work. No, we have to have purpose-driven lives, ladies and gentlemen, like our ancestors did. This is the animating contest of liberty. This is what, I mean, let me guess, I bet you're even happier after 20 years overseas. Uh, now you're really home in the real republic, in the homeland, when the fight's key. I mean, are, I mean, let me guess, are you happier now back home, even with them persecuting you, standing up for what's right? You, you want to know what? At least over there, I knew who my enemy was. I knew exactly who it was. I knew exactly what I needed to do. Here, the lines are so blurry, and every time you turn around and you call somebody an Islamic terrorist, or you say that it was terrorism, or you say Muslim or anything like that, you're the one who's persecuted for it. No, I understand it's harder in some ways because it's just the fog of, 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 of complexity and, and war, uh, geopolitical war, political war. But I'm saying, are, is it fulfilling to now be reaching tens of millions of people every week, though? It is. It's very, it's very fulfilling. I hope I can reach a lot more people. And, you know, th this is just this is just the start. And it shouldn't be the start. We should never have got to the point where we are. But the point. But we're now awake. Stay right there. We're going to come right back with Stephen Gurn, who predicted these attacks. Great patriot. Before I go any further, and we're going to co-host some with him and Roger Stone coming up. I got to plug one minute an hour. Without you, we're not here. So whether it's T-shirts or water filters or non-GMO heirloom seeds uh, or high-quality uh, organic coffee, it's great. It's all there. Sign up for auto ship, additional 10% off, free shipping at InfoWarsStore.com on order $50 or more. DNA Force is back in stock, a great probiotic, bomb defense, 25% off on that as well. Back in stock, a bunch of specials due in today. I want to thank you all for your support. We could not do it without you, but we need continued support. So I don't want to just stay at the same size under attack. I want to dominate. I want to grow. I want to give my full exertion against the globalists. We are winning, but they are launching counteroffensives right now. Stay with us.